Hey everybody, welcome to our video on reading and writing XML files from Microsoft Access. Recently I filmed a video in which I used a text file as a configuration file, if you will, to help uh, our front-end databases link or automatically relink to our back-end databases at application startup. Now some of my deployed databases use ordinary text files as this configuration file, but uh, some of my newer deployed databases use XML files for this configuration file. So I've decided to do a video today on the very basic, basic, basics of reading and writing to and from an XML file using VBA. So let's take a quick look at the XML file we're going to be playing with today. I'm going to open it in Notepad because it has the cool colors and indentation and whatnot. As you can see here on the screen, we've got a configuration tag that encompasses both of the data elements we're going to be working with today. We've got a location type and another element called backend folder. Between the location type start tag and location type end tag, we've got the, the uh, content or the data element or the text property in there. This one holds the word same at the moment. And then for backend folder, we've got just a string of X's as the data element there. I'm going to go ahead and close this XML file. Close. As usual, I have a form to help us demonstrate the code we want to work through today. Here I've got a form with three buttons. The first button right here, display. What this is going to do is it's going to read our XML file line by line and simply display it in this text box just so that we can see it. And uh, later on, when we update it with the right button, we'll be able to see those contents change real time. The second button here is the read button. And what it's going to do is it's going to open our XML file and display each of those data elements in these two text boxes. Okay, location type and back and folder. The right button, what it's going to do is it's going to take whatever we type in these text boxes and it's going to write them to the appropriate data element in the XML file and then redisplay the file so we can see the changes that we made to the form. Let's take a look at what we got in our code window. All right, so the first button I wanted to look at here the uh, display button. So here is the click event of our display command button. It has a single line of code called display file file name. Now file name is defined up at the top here. For simplicity's sake, it's a constant string and it holds a hard coded path to our sample XML file. Lord knows we don't want to do this in a real production database, but for simplicity's sake and less code in this demonstration. That's what we've got. And we'll find that file name variable all over the place in our code today. So we're going to call a user defined method here, display file. Now the reason I have display file in a method of its own is I need to call this code from three different places. Each of our command buttons are going to call this code. So we don't want to repeat this code all over the place. We want to have it in a single place where we can leverage it and reuse it. So here's display file, our method. It takes in f name as a string. That's the file name that we passed in from here. This is our text box. We're going to empty it, give it the zero-link string, and two string variables we're going to use also set those equal to zero-link strings. The next thing we want to do is obtain the next available file number from the operating system using the free file function. We're going to load that into an integer variable called file num. Next, we're going to open fname, which is again our file name, our hardcoded file name. Open it for input as in using our file num we just obtained from the operating system. After that, what we want to do is loop through every record in our file and simply display it in the text box on our form. So again, we're opening this XML file as a text file and we're going to read through every single record in there, even the stuff at the very top that we don't really care about as far as data is concerned. So we have a do while loop. Here's the scope terminator for our do while loop. We're going to perform this while we're not at the end of file on file num. Within our loop, we're going to read each record using the line input method, line input, file num, and we're going to load that record into a string variable called string line input. Then we're going to load that, we're going to concatenate that to a larger string variable. String full file is going to hold the contents of the entire file that we can display and plop into our, our text box. So string full file equals what we had in string full file from the previous iteration through our loop. Remember the first time through this loop, that'll be a zero length string, but each subsequent time through, it'll have hold the contents of all the previous records we've loaded or that we've read. Concatenate to that the record we just read and concatenate to that 
a carriage return and line feed so that we have a so we have a semi-formatted display of our file in our text box. After we've read the last record, we'll take string full file and load it into our text box on our form. So let's have a quick look at our form. Let's open the form, click our display button, and there we go. There's our file. Next, let's take a look at reading. Let's go back to our form. Reading the contents of each data element and displaying them up here in the appropriate text box. Okay, we put location type, up here location type, and back end folder here in the back end folder text box. Here's the code for our read command button click event. We have some XML objects here. We have a DOM document element called form DOM, an IXML DOM element. This is actually the root. This is going to be the the root element of our document and then we have a, a string variable here for error messages. Again we're going to zero out or space out, empty out all the text boxes in our form before we run any code. Next thing we want to do is open our XML file. We're going to set form DOM which is our DOM document. Set form DOM equal to a new DOM document. Then we're going to start using form DOM. We're going to say form DOM dot resolve externals equals false. This you would use if you had a schema and you wanted to pull in external data from the schema and use that um, in your code. We're not doing that today. Form DOM dot validate on parse. We're not going to ask the parser to, uh, to validate our document. And form dot load, and again our hard coded file name, this actually opens the XML file and loads it into this form DOM element, this DOM document element. So after we've loaded our file, we're going to test the form DOM dot parse error dot reason. And if it is not a zero length string, that means we had an error on load, we're going to load that parse error reason into a string variable, which we're then going to use when we go to our XML error label at the bottom here. XML error label is here. We're going to display a message box. It contains the name of our form, the name of the method we're in command read dot click and then the string message up there that will have whatever error we, we uh, ran into when we tried to open the document. Assuming we didn't have an error we'll continue on and we're going to get a reference to the actual document within the file. We're going to set our object root which above here as our IXML DOM element. We'll set it equal to our document, our form DOM dot document element. And then from there, that allows us, object root allows us to get to the actual nodes within the file. We'll load into our location type text box, object root dot select single node, we'll give it a string containing the name of the element or the tag we're after, and we're going to use the text property. The text property is simply the contents of the element or the text in between the start and the end tag of that element. And we do the same thing for the, the back end folder text box, except of course we're going after the back end folder element or tag. Let's head over back over to our form. Let's click the read button. What we want to see when we click this read button is we want to see the contents of location type appear appear in location type text box and the contents of the back end folder of course appear here in our in our back end folder text box. Click the read and we do indeed get that. Next, let's work on the right button. Slide on down to the right button. Here's our command right click event. Now, I want to point out that we have some repetitive code here. After I just made a big deal out of not having repetitive code below in our display file, here I've got repetitive code right here for the opening of the XML file and the getting of the the, uh, the object root or the, the document element. The reason I did that was up above here at least I wanted all of this code to be visible in one spot for the purposes of displaying it here in the video in an actual uh, production database. I would probably have all of this in a method of its own and that would make form DOM and object root form level variables or module level variables depending upon where you've got this code. Okay. 
but for the purposes of our video here, we've got it all in one spot. So again, command right dot click. We're going to empty out our text box for displaying the entire file on the form. We're going to go through all the same code again of, for opening the XML file all the way down to here. So we'll skip all that. Next, what we want to do is we want to take we want to take the values we have in these text boxes and load them into our XML file here and here. Okay. In other words, modifying the contents of our our elements, our data elements in the file. And that's very easy to do as well. We're going to set the object root, select single node, the name of the node or the element we're going after, the text property, set that equal to whatever we have in our text box. And it's that simple. Do that for each of these text boxes, each of the data elements. It's really just the reverse that we had up here in our read. Actually, it's exactly the reverse. After we've done that, however, we want to save the changes to the file. So form dom dot save. There's our file name. And then what I forgot to mention up above in our in our read method, we want to display the contents of this file because we just changed the contents of the, contents of the file. Now we want to see those changed contents on our form. So let's modify this. Same one, two, three, X, Y, 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 Z, 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 and do a write. And what we want to see happen now, we want to see this data down here change in our file when we get down to that display method. That's uh, display file method. Right, and there we go. Same one, two, three, and X, Y, Z, and there. So that's it for the code. Not very much code involved here. You have some specific code for opening an XML file and loading that file and that document, if you will, into some objects. And then you can get at the individual nodes. The reading and the writing of the nodes is very similar code. So overall, I think um, not very complicated code here. Of course, you can you can extend this code to to uh, unimaginable uh, applications. Of course, uh, configuration file is just the beginning. As usual, I have a link to the code listing for this video and other videos in the description of the video down below. I also used Notepad++ at the beginning of the video to show the XML file. I'll put a link to that website down below. That's a free piece of software. I hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.